Well, it, it, it owes them an acknowledgement of what happened. Um, we, don't, we don't like to talk uh, about that in the, uh, in the United States. Even Black History Month is a truncated version of what Carter T. T. Uh, Woodson had in, Carter G. Woodson had in mind. Now it starts in slavery and moves forward uh, and cuts us all from any access to African history, which was not what uh, Woodson intended. And so we we obviously owe the value uh, of our hire to those people uh, who suffered uh, so much and, and their families and those who de are descended from those people who worked uh, for 246 years for nothing. We owe them something for that, but we owe them the story of themselves. Uh, we, we have been asked to expect that people can survive in good, sound psychological health on ashes and obliterated history. Uh, when I was a child in, uh, in Richmond, Virginia, uh, we used to have this phrase uh, that we used all the time, uh, from here to Timbuktu. But uh, nobody knew what Timbuktu was. Nobody knew the provenance of the word didn't know where it was, didn't even know it was a place. Uh, Timbuktu, of course, was a crossroads uh, of, uh, of commerce in Mali, but it was also the site of one of the world's first universities at Sankora, which was built before the Black Moors built the first university in Spain at Salamanca uh, in uh, 711 AD. And so still in, uh, in Timbuktu, you have all of these manuscripts written between 5 AD and 15 AD, uh, literatures, uh, poetry, um, uh, uh, manuscripts of, uh, of the highest quality written by African and, uh, and Arab scholars. And we knew nothing about this. We didn't know anything about Mona Matapa. We didn't know anything about uh, uh, the Queen of Sheba, who is... Uh, described in the Bible as the queen of Aksum and Sheba. She lived all of her life in Aksum, which about uh, approximate what Ethiopia is today. Uh, but Sheba was in, uh, in uh, what is now Yemen, uh, but it was shortened uh, to the queen of Sheba. But uh, the Bible describes her as, as a woman of black skin. But in the movie, it was played by Gina Lola Brigida. And so all of our story was taken. And uh, the, the, the point of all of this is that uh, people have a history because they need it. Uh, people develop cultures uh, and uh, mores and traditions because they need them to stay in good health. That is how uh, we make social progress. Uh, great uh, Jamaican think uh, Rex Nettleford uh, once said uh, that living without your story, without memory, is like driving without a rear view um, uh, mirror, except it's more dangerous to live without uh, your story. So uh, uh, the point is that we were cut off from all of that and then renamed. Uh, when I was a child, uh, we were called Negroes. No one knew what the provenance was of that word, where it came from, uh, what it was supposed to mean. But it was a part of the wall that was built to separate those who were stolen and used and exploited uh, from uh, their African story. And so uh, if, uh, if everyone in the world needs a story, uh, so did we. The same thing has happened to Native Americans, uh, for example. Um, they have the highest uh, crime rate in the country, violent crime rate, on, uh, on Indian reservations. The question is why? Uh, what awful thing happened that would cause this uh, situation for them? And the same is true uh, uh, in the case of, uh, of African Americans. And when it was all over, uh, this, this awful chapter from the beginning of slavery 246 years, followed by virtually a century of peonage in which people were forced to work for no income in the South, and then legal segregation. One can't uh, uh, 
say before the end of the Voting Rights Act uh, that uh, the nightmare had ended, and, and during that nightmare, uh, untold sums of lives had been wrecked, and the social damage is still with us. And so we owe an acknowledgment of that. Uh, uh, this is not peculiar to uh, the, the United States that you don't want to acknowledge. The people of Turkey don't want to acknowledge uh, the genocide against Armenians uh, where in 1915 a million and a half people were killed. China doesn't want to acknowledge uh, its uh, discriminations in Tibet uh, or in Western China against the Uyghur people. Many nations hide from their past, but we owe people the truth. We owe them their history and we owe them the value of their hire. We owe them repair, uh, and we're not doing that. Uh, not only that, we don't even want to talk about it as a society. Holocaust is 12 years. This is 246 years plus a century. People lost their names, they lost their languages, they lost their culture, they lost everything. Uh, many people uh, had their, uh, uh, their, their genitals severed. Uh, people lost their tongues. Uh, uh, Thomas Jefferson, uh, when he was 42 years old, had a relationship with a 14-year-old girl, Sally Hemmings, that he owned, and it wasn't frowned upon. We know what it would be called today. That was routine. Uh, we lost... Uh, any idea of who we were. Um, it was our, our, our past, our memory was banished and we worked ourselves to early deaths and built the Capitol, built the White House, uh, endowed Harvard Law School, uh, which was endowed by Isaac uh, Ro uh, Royale from the proceeds of sale of a sale of slaves he owned in Antigua in the West Indies. Uh, these things were routine, and so many American institutions transferred um, wealth that they got uh, from uh, the work of people who weren't paid to their families, uh, making uh, their line rich uh, and impoverishing uh, those who had uh, been stolen and used uh, in, this, uh, in this way. I'm very fortunate in that. Uh, we, we, have, uh, we have pictures. I can go back to my, uh, my uh, great-great-grandparents uh, uh, with, uh, with pictures and uh, with my great-great-great-grandparents with, uh, with a story. Of, uh, of of their lives in the uh, in the United States, but that is extremely uh, extremely rare. When uh, segregation ended, there were those of us, and I was among them. I was very fortunate. I had um, strong parents and an intact family. Both of my parents uh, finished college. My father taught history in my high school. My mother taught until she stopped uh, to rear uh, four children. And uh, that meant everything to us. And so while we were damaged by, uh, by segregation, humiliated by segregation, um, we, we had a home, um, we had a family that was intact, that was sound, that was strong. So many people didn't have that, and so they were exposed uh, to the, the brute, uh, sharp edge of what was happening to them. And I, I think there were uh, some of us who were in a position to move out and up uh, once segregation ended. I was among that group. Until that time, we and those who were bottom stuck were all in the same boat. We virtually lived uh, on the same blocks together. We were closed in uh, to each other. But some of us were able to go up and out. Others of us could not. And so we cleaved uh, into, uh, into two parts, I think, even then. And I am not sure that those institutions that fought so hard for us all 
at one time uh, have fought the same uh, tenacious battles um, uh, for those who remain bottom stuck today. And so we've got uh, the largest prison population in the world. Um, uh, over two million people, um, the largest in the world. And um, two, some three quarters of those who face the death penalty are black and Hispanic. Half of the prison population is, uh, is, is black because of the way people's lives have been, uh, have been mauled, but also because of unfairness in our criminal justice system. Uh, we see that for uh, uh, nonviolent drug crimes, we constitute 14% uh, of those who commit those crimes. But roughly, if I still have the figures right, uh, something like 56% of those prosecuted and close to 75% of those incarcerated. One sentence for powder co cocaine, another sentence for crack cocaine. For powder, which is essentially what uh, white people use, the sentence is much lower than it is for crack cocaine, which is what black people have used. And so the system's unfair, the history has been cruel, and in many cases, very little has changed uh, for, those, uh, for those people. We don't want to talk about it. We still don't want to talk about it. We run from it. We now call it victimization. And so it's not uh, to be uh, raised. It's a sad truth. Well, I was as much going to a place as leaving a place. Uh, some of both. Uh, I had been going to uh, St. Kitts in the Caribbean for um, 25 years. And uh, it's a small island. It's, uh, it's made for someone like me who doesn't like uh, big crowded places, big cities. Uh, it's, a, it's an exquisitely beautiful place uh, with mountains and uh, um, clear blue water uh, and uh, and uh, a kind of smallness that allows a kind of uh, intimacy you seldom go downtown when you don't see someone that you that you know um, but the biggest piece of it is that uh, um, the woman I loved and married uh, is uh, from St. Kitts and so uh, we had decided uh, uh, many years ago that uh, we were going to build a home there, which we did 11 years ago. Um, and so Hazel and I have, uh, have been there all that time, and uh, our daughter, Kalia, went to, uh, went to high school there uh, and uh, finished high school and came back up here to college. And uh, so that was one reason. Uh, I was also weary. Uh, uh, tired um, of, uh, uh, of a struggle that had depleted me. Uh, America had worn me out, um, simply because there are things that can't be talked about. Um, it doesn't, has no tolerance uh, for that kind of, uh, of, uh, of honesty and, um, and has no plans to make uh, anything right. It, as if um, it says, and I heard it saying, we have stopped the active crime. Uh, crime. Uh, and so if there's damage, uh, then uh, we are walking away from that. Um, it's as if to say at the, uh, at the end of slavery, um, you could sort of uh, liken this to two runners in a race at the starting line. And you, you take a gun, shoot one runner in both legs, and sound the gun. You say, now, run. Uh, you can't catch up with people who've had everything taken from them. Uh, but it, and and the, the, the things that are not material are even more important. Uh, it's your software. It's your interior plumbing. 
It's what you've been caused to think of yourself, how you see yourself, the confidence or lack thereof with which you are trying to run any race. Uh, was drained from many people uh, over that long period. And it's, it's not like anything that has happened in recent memory. We're talking about the longest running massive crime against humanity of the last 1,000 years in the world. It's not like we bombed Nagasaki and Hiroshima. And it incinerate hundreds of thousands of people in literally minutes. Because if the Japanese who survive can remember their literature, can remember their culture and their traditions, they can put it all back up again. But if the people who have lost it all, mothers, fathers, children, uh, traditions, cultures, ways of living, then they, they, they don't know how to begin. I went to a Jewish friends uh, and uh, Hazel and I some years ago when we were living in Washington and went to a bar mitzvah and uh, to see the launching of this adolescent son into, uh, into adulthood. When praise givers come and say all of these wonderful things about a child, oh, such a wonderful uh, cultural, traditional rite and ceremony uh, to practice. There had been things like that and still are practiced in Africa, but we lost all of that. And so you're caused to reinvent cultures almost. Uh, every generation. That's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of damage. And it has to be acknowledged and it has to be reckoned with. We're not prepared to do that. I come up uh, about three times uh, per, per semester, the dean of Penn State Law School, who I've known for a number of years, Philip McConaughey, um, called me and asked me if I'd like to uh, teach a human rights course, and I've spent all of my life in human rights, uh, growing out of what I've been talking about, and I said I'd be, be happy to, and so I teach uh, a human rights course at, uh, at Penn State Law School. I come up about three times a semester. The rest of it we do via video bridge uh, from, uh, from St. Kitts, so it, it works wonderfully. Oh, yes. Oh, my mother and father earned that for me. My grandparents survived that for me. Uh, it is my due. I remember my mother, when he was nominated, uh, we, we were in Montreal, Hazel and Clea and I were in Montreal. And she called me at the hotel. She was, I think, 93 then. She said, and she was crying. She said, it's the greatest day of my life. And so uh, it, uh, it tells me, and I didn't need that, uh, that telling. I always knew this. America is uh, many places. Um, it, it, is, it is a place that is, uh, can be tolerant uh, and accepting. Um, a place where views can be moderated um, uh, and differences can be reconciled. And I, I think um, a good deal of that America supported vigorously the candidacy of Barack Obama. And it's not only important to the black community, it's important to other segments of America as well. But he still faces um, uh, sort of vicious uh, kind of uh, uh, ridicule from certain other quarters uh, that are not unlike um, uh, the America we saw when I was young in Richmond, Virginia. But I, I think there are several Americas. I had grown tired uh, of uh, at least one of them. 
Well, that's certainly uh, largely true in our foreign assistance. Foreign assistance always has to be associated with uh, a strategic purpose. Uh, when we, we look at what we, uh, we did as a country to Haiti, uh, Thomas Jefferson did everything he could to defeat the, um, the Haitian Revolution, the only successful slave revolt uh, in the history of the, the hemisphere. Uh, and these uh, people uh, turned back uh, an army from Spain, armies of 60,000 apiece uh, from, uh, from England and uh, France twice, and uh, won their freedom, opened their doors to fleeing slaves from all over the world, uh, gave Simone Bolivar uh, weapons and uh, muskets and soldiers to fight uh, uh, for freedom in Latin America in exchange for Bolivar freeing slaves there, a promise he didn't keep. Uh, but they, they, they did all of these things, and America did everything they could to uh, quash uh, this Haitian quest for freedom for people who had been enslaved, uh, enslaved. and when they won their revolution, they took uh, with it uh, two-thirds of France's uh, foreign uh, income because it was the most valuable colony in the world to France. Now. That survives even until now. Uh, Frederick Douglass spoke at the Chicago World's Fair in 1893 or 4, uh, mystified about how hostile the United States has always been towards Haiti, hostile towards them because they won their freedom. And we did everything we could uh, to overthrow the democratically elected government of, uh, of President uh, Aristide. Um, we, uh, George Bush uh, blocked uh, loans from the Inter-American Development uh, Foundation of uh, $146 million, loans for water, education, and things like that. The International Republican Institute arranged and organized the opposition to him. And then we as a country trained um, um, uh, rebel soldiers in the Dominican Republic, trained and armed them to come into Haiti to overthrow the government. And in the last analysis, uh, those rebels didn't figure into it. Uh, Bush carried out the coup himself when American soldiers arrived at the home of the president and took him off at 3 o'clock in the morning to the Central African Republic, and we had to go there. Maxine Waters, a Jamaican parliamentarian, Sharon Hay Webster, uh, Ira Kurzban, the president's lawyer, flew off with a plane to rescue him, to bring him back to Jamaica, and then Condoleezza Rice threatened to make the Jamaican government, uh, uh, threatened to make it uh, very difficult for them if uh, Jamaica accepted Aristide even for a matter of days before he went to South Africa, and all because he said uh, the uh, minimum income uh, ought to be raised uh, from uh, $1 a day to $2 a day, that the sweatshop owners, essentially white, in Haiti, combined with American authorities, uh, to, uh, to get him thrown out of office. If you look at the history of American foreign aid, what we do and why we do it, it is not a pretty picture. We didn't recognize Haiti until uh, after the emanci emancipation uh, in, the, in the United States. So from 1804 until the end of, civil war, of the Civil War, we combined uh, with all of the Western powers and the Vatican uh, to smother Haiti, uh, to destroy Haiti. And then in 1825, France imposed uh, 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 sanctions on Haiti, saying that they had to be paid uh, $21 billion for having lost the right to use uh, Haitian slaves. So it's the first time in history ever that the winner of a war had to pay reparations to the, uh, to, to the loser. And then after that, in 1950, Woodrow Wilson uh, 
uh, invades Haiti, stays for 19 years, kills thousands of people with American Marines, uh, and uh, takes the peasant uh, leader of uh, the revolt in Haiti um, in response to this invasion, and nails him up uh, on a board for public display to demonstrate to people what the consequences could be uh, when you fight back against America. And then a chain of, uh, of, uh, of, of, of black presidents uh, working at the, uh, at, at the direction of the United States, um, uh, the Duvaliers, Papa and son, the father killed up to 50,000 people, that was fine. Aristide, the first democratically elected president of Haiti. We are responsible for the coup that took him out of office. The Bush administration did it directly. Not covered in the American press. The American press said he fled to South Africa when he was taken to the Central African Republic and we had to go there to rescue him. And Jamaica braved the American storm to keep him there until he could go to South Africa. We were responsible for that overthrow of a democratic government in Haiti. And the Haitians, we owe so much. Because the Haitian Revolution, first of all, uh, made possible the Louisiana Purchase because Napoleon was done um, with um, empire as a result of that humiliating defeat. Uh, uh, secondly, uh, 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 after Haiti, after that revolution, the North Atlantic slave trade was ended by Britain and the United States. And the last uh, sort of, uh, uh, sort of uh, breath of, uh, of that was the end of the Civil War in the United States. All of this precipitated by the Haitian Revolution. People in the United States know nothing about the history nothing about the story, including African Americans. And so we owe so much to those Haitians, ex-slaves, who defeated four of the most powerful armies of Europe in a twelve and a half year war for their freedom. One of the greatest stories in history. Trans-Africa was the, or is, the organization that uh, I began in 1976 uh, to, uh, to, to, to galvanize African-American opinion on foreign policy issues, particularly issues that concern the black world, U.S. policy towards Africa, the Caribbean, and, uh, and Latin America. And so Trans-Africa... Uh, of course, was the organization that uh, that uh, used its instrumentalities to galvanize American opposition to apartheid, uh, and uh, with the embassy arrest that uh, we we were able to organize the arrest of 5,000 people uh, in, uh, in in the 1980s and 1984 and the next year. Uh, and um, uh, with that, working with members of Congress, uh, we won a support uh, for the uh, set of sanctions uh, that um, uh, President Reagan uh, vetoed, but his veto was overwritten by a Republican-controlled Senate uh, because of uh, the work we did uh, and uh, the millions we organized uh, to make a difference. That, coupled with uh, the great work that was being done in South Africa, uh, led to, uh, uh, to a new South Africa that we, we see today. But uh, we, we've been doing that work over a period of time. I had been there 25 years when I, uh, when I stepped down. Maxie Robinson was my father, and, uh, and Doris Robinson was my, my mother. And uh, as, as I've already introduced you uh, to, um, to them, uh, they had um, um, uh, strong opinions, uh, and they uh, were extraordinary parents, and they were extremely uh, principled people. I remember when my brother Max uh, 
was with ABC News as the Chicago anchor, and he had gone to Smith College to make a speech, and he said some things critical of ABC. Uh, and uh, I was so proud of him because uh, in him I saw my father uh, and, and the kinds of things that he had stood for uh, when, we were, uh, when we were children. Sure did. But I don't think there's any question about that. But um, I, th I think he thought, um, as, as much as he loved his work, he thought there were a few things more important than giving the news. I was born in July 6, 1941. Uh, two realities. I, uh, I was happy in our home and in our family. Uh, in a big family. My mother had uh, uh, lots of sisters and uh, everybody was nearby and we saw uh, everybody uh, and, and, a, and a lot of family uh, all, all the time. And though, so that all of that was wonder, wonderful and joyous, uh, but uh, the conditions under which we were, we, we were living uh, were um, horrid. Although I could go for weeks without seeing a white person, uh, the experiences when you had them were, were painful. I mean, every, every lesson that was taught um, was designed to teach you that you were inferior. Um, and I remember being caddying on a golf course, something my father had encouraged me not to do. No, you no, don't carry bags for people. And uh, I, um, I, I did it, and uh, I remember rattling the course, uh, the, the, the clubs in the bag on, on a green. And uh, the, uh, this is a country club of Virginia, and the, uh, the golfer turned to me and said, if you rattle those clubs again, I'll wrap one around your neck. And I dropped the bag and walked off and, uh, and, and went home. There were lots of experiences sort of like that, and some of uh, them uh, had us witnessing um, our parents having to accept um, uh, what was going on. My mother would have to put a cap on her head before she could try on a hat in stores uh, downtown in Richmond. One store, Mantaldo's on Gray Street, you would just go in and stand. Uh, no, one would, uh, no one would wait on you as if you weren't there. And uh, when uh, we would uh, even go to Chinese restaurants to get food, um, the Chinese had to live by these rules too, so we would have to go up some stairs uh, to the kitchen uh, and get the food uh, to, uh, to carry out. Or when the bus was empty, except for us, we would still have to sit in the back uh, behind the the line. These things register on your psyche, and I think they stay there for uh, for a lifetime. When Mark was running for office in New York recently. I haven't seen him since uh, since that um, that uh, experience. Uh, but when he was running for office, uh, someone had read that in in the book, and uh, a journalist and asked me of course about it and I told him and uh, and uh, something about that was published and Mark didn't deny it uh, but he said he couldn't remember and I I thought about the African proverb uh, the axe forgets but the tree remembers oh my I uh, I, th I think um, well, it's absurd, uh, first of all. Uh, I think uh, sometimes we, uh, we've been denied uh, the highest attention for so long that uh, when uh, people attend our church and they know the hymns or they uh, play the saxophone reasonably well, uh, we uh, accord them credit uh, that is largely uh, un undeserved. Uh, Bill Clinton was returning uh, fleeing Haitian refugees uh, who had uh, been fleeing uh, the military dic dictatorships uh, that we armed. 
and uh, supported uh, in Haiti. And he cordoned uh, the place with ships and, and caught these people and turned them over to, uh, to, their, uh, to their killers um, in, uh, in Rwanda. Uh, in the UN, it was uh, Ambassador Madeleine Albright who uh, had to take some responsibility for the deaths of 500,000 uh, Tutsis uh, in Rwanda uh, because she uh, single-handedly uh, uh, obstructed uh, UN intervention with the support of, uh, of Bill Clinton. Uh, when a handful of nations in the Caribbean, uh, St. Lucia, uh, Dominica, and a few others, uh, banana-producing produ nations, uh, had uh, a small uh, slice of the European market to export their bananas to, Bill Clinton uh, fought uh, and, and threatened uh, with 100 percent tariffs those European countries that were giving that market opportunity to these Caribbean banana producers who only produced bananas. Um, that was what their economies were based on. But he wanted to that, um, that, uh, that tiny bit, that slice of market opportunity to go to Chiquita Bananas, uh, whose uh, CEO uh, was a big supporter of his. But he couldn't have been as big a supporter as the black community had uh, uh, to, to him. And so uh, that uh, was taken away from those, uh, those producers and Caribbean co economies were significantly damaged uh, uh, by that. Uh, when he was asked to uh, reconcile uh, the, uh, the differences between uh, the sentence for uh, the use or sale of crack cocaine with powder cocaine, he talked about it but never did uh, anything. On human rights, he, he never ratified, uh, he weakened the uh, treaty for the International Criminal Court but he never ratified it. Uh, I, uh, I, I really don't understand uh, when you look at his record uh, outside of naming blacks uh, to, uh, to positions, I, I don't see some of the, the not so well known things, of course, um, would reveal that uh, he, uh, he, he did some rather unsavory things uh, to the black community internationally. I don't understand uh, much of what he did as a basis for black support. To President Clinton, oh, I've never talked to him. When I was on a 28-day hunger strike, uh, uh, trying to get him uh, to, uh, to, uh, to stop uh, rounding up people and sending those people to their deaths in Haiti, uh, on the 28th day I was hospitalized, I think maybe it's a 26 day, dehydrated, hospitalized, and he thought I was going to die. He sent uh, uh, Sandy Berger, who was my uh, law school classmate, to talk to me uh, to see whether I was really dying or not. And uh, Sandy came uh, with an offer that if I would agree to end the hunger strike, he would agree to, uh, to, to screen Haitian refugees. That's all I was asking for that when you're fleeing with a well-founded fear of persecution under international human rights law, then all the member nations of the United Nations have an obligation to provide refuge to you. That's all I was asking for. He knew these people were fleeing with a well-founded fear of persecution. We were supplying the weapons to the thugs but he kept doing it. But when the hunger strike uh, publicized all of that and he thought I might die, he, uh, he sent uh, Sandy to, uh, to make that offer. But I never once spoke to him. He simply said to the press that he was glad that I was out there. I ought to stay out there doing this. 
I never knew what he meant by that, and I've never talked to him at all. Uh, it wasn't a long discussion. I was in bed. Uh, Hazel was, uh, was with me, and I uh, largely listened. And he told me what the offer was, and I told him uh, that uh, I, would, uh, I would accept that offer. And he asked if I would appear with him on Meet the Press, uh, I think the Sunday, which was the next day, and I told him I would, and that was that. Well, let, let me be uh, brief uh, about uh, uh, Susan Rice. I, uh, I've been troubled uh, by those associations that uh, you have described. I, I don't know the extent to which the black uh, uh, political class uh, has uh, closed ranks or did close ranks around her. I've, I've been out of the country a large part of the time, although I do try to keep up, but uh, I, I'm, I'm not privy uh, to, uh, to, to, uh, to that. I, I will say, um, in uh, defense of uh, elected officials, I don't know that we could have won sanctions against South Africa without the vigorous support of the Congressional Black Caucus. Very, virtually every member of the Congressional Black Caucus uh, went to jail at the South African Embassy and did a great deal uh, to support the sanctions uh, effort uh, 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 when uh, uh, we, we, we had a, a discussion about uh, Aristide. Um, I was on the phone from my home uh, in uh, St. Kitts, in St. Kitts uh, when we were trying to find um, a place for him to be uh, after we could uh, take him from the Central African Republic. Uh, Maxine Waters was on the call, and Charlie Rangel was on the call. And uh, 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 the Prime Minister of uh, uh, P.J. Patterson of Jamaica was on the call too, and he told us that uh, that Condoleezza Rice had uh, threatened him uh, and the government of Jamaica uh, if uh, we would accept uh, this democratically elected president of Haiti uh, in uh, in Jamaica, and he did it anyway, and he braved it. Uh, but the caucus was very supportive then. Maxine was so important, uh, uh, so supportive. Uh, Maxine Waters, that she went on this flight uh, uh, with us to the Central African Republic, which was a dangerous mission uh, uh, to go and to meet with President Bozizi uh, in the Central African Republic and to say to him, as she did, I have to be back in Congress, but I'm not leaving here without President Aristide, uh, and are you going to release him or not? And so he then called Washington, and he called Paris, uh, and we were wheels up uh, with him, um, headed towards Jamaica, uh, uh, him and his wife, an American citizen, American-born, uh, Mildred Aristide, that had been abducted by the Bush administration. Uh, with the collaboration and involvement of, uh, of, uh, of Powell and uh, Condoleezza Rice. And so the Congressional Black Caucus on all of these things, on the Haiti issue as well as on the South Africa issue, was uh, solidly on the right side of the issue. The bigger problem uh, is an American problem, uh, and, and that is uh, that most Americans don't know very much about these issues. Uh, you, you, we're just not knowledgeable. Uh, you know, you you can't have a healthy democracy without a very enlightened citizenry. And I'm not sure that uh, we know enough about what we're doing in the world. Uh, if we are generally uh, well read enough, um, uh, if, if if we're connected. Uh, to uh, to the outside world in a way that would uh, give us to believe that people on the outside see us differently than we see ourselves. They know in America we don't know. And so I, I think that applies to blacks as well as uh, as well as whites. Well, the reason I wrote. Uh, my, my latest book, which is a novel, Makeda, uh, has to do with the repair of us uh, from, the, uh, 
from from the inside. I, th I think um, this business of losing access to our story and our history uh, has uh, has done incalculable damage uh, to, to to us, uh, and, and and so that one's one's real power uh, to to stand against the winds comes from inside. And so it means that we, we have to know the world, we have to feel that we can change it. And I don't think this is the kind of thing that you can charge to leaders alone. It has to happen for everybody. And so this is a book uh, about, um, about a grandmother who has lived uh, uh, previous lives. Uh, she was there for the 11th dynasty in uh, ancient Egypt uh, when Mento Hotep, uh, uh, Mentu Hotep um, uh, was uh, in charge and had built this enormous uh, empire and she was there in the first dynasty with Narma. Both of these Egyptian leaders are black and uh, we, we don't know anything about this. Uh, we don't know anything about the Queen of Sheba. We don't know anything about Lalibela, Ethiopia, and the dawn of Christianity and Ethiopia's role in it. Uh, we don't know anything about ancient Mali, uh, where the Dogon people uh, knew about the Sirius star system. Um, they knew about stars that couldn't be seen with the naked eye, and before the age of a telescope couldn't be seen at all, they had known about these stars for thousands of years. How they knew, we don't know, but they knew and named them. And uh, Mali, uh, during the Malian Empire, the Mali with a written constitution and a human rights a flavor to that constitution, we don't know about these things. And if you don't know your history, you're lost. And this book is about uh, this wise and extraordinary woman who's had previous lives, and she has seen um, our history from the age before slavery. And she tells it to her grandson so that he can be empowered by it. And so I think that is a part of our responsibility. We have to cause our country to give us a different kind of education about ourselves. We, we, we could learn something from Native Americans uh, something about climate change, something about how to treat the environment, something about culture and traditions. But we don't learn anything about anything. We only teach it one way. And that is the history uh, that uh, uh, has us draped in the cloth that does not fit um, our particular situation. Perhaps, uh, perhaps because it's a, it's a, it's a very lyrical place, uh, and um, it, it affords um, uh, friendships of all kinds um, across and up and down uh, social uh, and economic lines. Um, it's a wonderfully intimate uh, place. Uh, it's been it's been very good for me uh, and good for my family. Well, I, I, I don't look at the water. I, could, I don't think I can get anything done. I, I, go, I, I, I go in a room upstairs in the house, and I, I turn the ceiling fan in on uh, uh, number one and let it move slowly. And uh, it, it, it makes you um, contemplative, you know, when, when, you, when you do that. I sit there and, and hope that something happens, and frequently it does. And so... Uh, I've, I've been very happy about that. I, I wrote uh, Makeda in, uh, in St. Kitts, so uh, maybe it reflects that. Never. There are occasions I go to the Prime Minister's Gala um, uh, once a year, and, and there are formal occasions um, that uh, I have to put it on. I, I don't frequently wear long pants in uh, and, and think it's it's uh, it's a different pace and a different life, and I uh, I like it. It it uh, it's made for me. Two islands, um, thirty five thousand people between thirty five and forty and forty on St. Kitts and ten thousand on uh, on Nevis by the English.
well-managed uh, a democracy uh, and uh, you know fiercely implacably democratic very authentic I uh, Hazel and I were driving in the countryside and uh, we saw a flamboyant tree that we liked it's in growing in a field flamboyant tree is one of the prettiest trees in the world it has it uh, blooms between June and September either brilliant red or orange or something between and it's a it's it's just a wonderful tree uh, in every way and so uh, we we uh, located the man who owned the tree it's in a field nothing's going on in the field and so uh, we stopped him and, and said, uh, well, how much would you take for the tree? Now, I'm, I'm an American, you see. I have, uh, unfortunately, some manners I shouldn't have uh, because you have the occasion where people will stop you. Americans start somewhere in the middle of a conversation by getting to the point, how much will you take for the tree? And he says, hello, how are you? That sort of thing. And so, yes, of course. And uh, I, I'm, I'm interested in buying a tree. And he, he looked at me and smiled. And he said, a tree's not for sale. And I said, well, it's, but it's not doing anything there. I mean, it's not. It's, he said, no, it's not for sale. So I said, uh, suppose I offered uh, $500. It's a modest sized tree. It's not big. You can still dig it out and replant it. Most things are. Uh, fairly easily replanted in the Caribbean soil, so rich, rain so much, so warm. He says, it's not for sale. I said, suppose I offered you a thousand dollars. He said, no, no. I said, suppose I offered you five thousand dollars. The tree is not for sale. Now, we, this whole business of what we call success. Uh, we only have one definition for success in America. It has to do with uh, how much money you make. Uh, and I don't think that's their definition. And so here, uh, a neurosurgeon who's not uh, terribly nice to his wife and children, um, if he makes a lot of money, he's a success. But a taxi driver, even though he's an enormously wonderful father uh, and, uh, and husband, he's not a success. So what do you mean by success? I think their definition may be a little different from ours. Now, um, it, it, it certainly doesn't have everything to do with money, you see? And so I think it sounds, to some people, when you start the discussion there, somewhat crass. I didn't get it. I didn't get it. I, I, I did learn, though, that uh, they're, 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 they grow very fast, and you can get them uh, small, and you don't even have to have the first thing I, from up here, my, my, mother, uh, my mother gardened uh, decorative flowers until she was at least 93. And uh, when I was a child, I used to spend uh, lots of time in the yard with her because I loved it. I love my hands in the soil, just as she and we like used to like to talk about plants and that sort of thing. And so that's one of the things I love about the Caribbean because everything blooms all the time. And uh, it's, uh, it's so wonderful. And so you can get uh, flamboyant trees rather, rather easily and, uh, and plant them and, and they all go somewhere. It depends on who you uh, who you are. I uh, it it didn't take with me. Um, um, I was never interested in in that, and it's, it's not anything necessarily great to say about me. I'm just built that way. I'm I'm essentially quite private in in what. And so I never liked uh, the public side of what I used to do at all. And, uh, and so I'm very much a home person. There's no place in the world I'd 
want to be more than uh, than home. And so, um, whatever was happening here, I think I had a built-in immunity to it. Well, I I, um, I understand very much uh, how you, how you feel. I uh, I, I think that. Uh, you can't have uh, often much reason for expectation of uh, any anything different. I've taken the positions that I have taken, particularly on uh, reparations, uh, because in my view it is our due. That doesn't mean that I expect uh, that uh, they will materialize in uh, even in my lifetime and not in the near term future but it is renovative when you know that um, it is our due the question is what do we have to do within ourselves to repair ourselves psychically uh, and emotionally and I think that we have to learn as much as we can about our story. We have to read um, uh, vigorously everything that we can put our hands on. We have to um, uh, make sure that our children get the best education we can win for them and that uh, they have the, the right values. Uh, and w we have to do the best we can with what we have. And we have to continue to say that that doesn't uh, come close to what we are owed for what we've been made to endure for a long, long, long period of, uh, of, of time. Um, uh, we all inherit um, uh, our starting place in line. Uh, for those of us um, who come from uh, families of wealth, um, and those of us who come from families that are impoverished. Uh, and I'm not just talking about material wealth and poverty. I'm talking about social wealth and poverty. And so the race is much more difficult for some of us uh, than for other of us, us, others of us. And it was made difficult because what, have we, what we had to face for 246 years um, catching up um, uh, without any recognition of that difficulty uh, on the part of a government that benefited from slavery, on the part of a private sector and sections of our population that continue to benefit uh, from that slavery. Um, uh, we, we um, uh, uh, nonetheless, have to understand ourselves of what we are owed and what our due is and continue to say that notwithstanding uh, of uh, whether or not that is accepted uh, on the other side. Well, I agree with that. Uh, we, we, uh, we, we need to, it seems to, uh, to be to retool our, our values to some extent, to balance them uh, 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 overbalance them towards uh, entrepreneurship. Um, we uh, we need to um, to invest in that um, our energy. Uh, we need to to know that uh, there's very little um, that can be done without uh, without money. We have to be in a position to endow our own efforts. Um, uh, we don't have it. Uh, kind, kind of money now. We don't own uh, any news broadcast organs that are major organs. And so we, we are still depending on other people uh, to uh, in their newsrooms where decisions are made uh, often by groups of people that don't include any of us to make deci decisions to uh, uh, tell stories that would favor us about our situation, about our history, about uh, our journey, 
And that uh, won't happen until we're in a position uh, to make that happen. And so um, we, um, I often thought when uh, I was uh, a young basketball player um, and have thought more about it since that it is much better to own the team than to play on the team. Uh, and we, we've, we've, we've got to get that lesson uh, through our heads. We, we've got to uh, understand, uh, for instance, that uh, in the Caribbean, there are Caribbean mothers who tell uh, their children that when they come to the United States to go to college, uh, don't, uh, don't associate with uh, African Americans. And they do this because of what they see on American television. They watch American reality shows. And those shows picture us and, uh, in a very unfavorable light. Uh, they don't show us uh, in, uh, in, in, in colleges. They, they don't show us in graduate programs. They don't show us excelling in science. Uh, and the arts, uh, they don't show any of that. Um, uh, they show the worst possible uh, uh, things uh, about us. And it is very off-putting to people who watch these shows around the world. Well, somebody's making a lot of money from these shows. And I am not sure that this isn't the same thing, old wine in new bottles. Uh, the, the, it, it, making use of us in that way, um, uh, sort of self-disparaging stuff uh, that makes a lot of money from, for producers and writers and other people uh, behind the, uh, the cameras. But we don't make the decisions to put these shows on, but they're there. We have to be in a position uh, to uh, control these sort of operations, uh, these sorts of operations. And so we have to prepare our young people to aspire to that, uh, to not only make the movies, to not only be in them, but to direct them, uh, to, uh, to, to green light them. Um, we're not in that uh, position uh, now in Hollywood or, or any place else. The New York Times didn't even cover uh, uh, Aristide's uh, uh, being uh, taken off in the middle of the night to the Central African Republic. No, well, Lydia had gone to uh, the uh, the uh, bicentennial uh, and uh, described uh, uh, the hundreds of thousands of people, something close to a million people as a small but enthusiastic crowd. And I, I do think it is often the case that black writers uh, in publications who do things that disparage the black community um, um, facilitated upward mobility uh, in their shops. And um, I uh, uh, decided that she wasn't the right person to have uh, on the plane. Amy Goodman was there from uh, Democracy Now! and a reporter from the Washington Post, yes. But by and large, uh, this story uh, was an extraordinary story, was not covered by the New York Times at all. Zip. Nothing. How could they not cover it? What kind of journalism is that? Well, I'm, 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 I'm fearful of uh, Chinese motives as well. I, I, uh, I, uh, because I'm uh, critical of uh, of apologies, my country have a responsibility to uh, to practice that uh, criticism. That's what constructive democracy is all about. But I'm not happy about China either. China has uh, a horrible human rights uh, policies, uh, both in China as a one-party uh, dictatorship and in, in its treatment of its uh, own citizens, and particularly. Uh, what it uh, has done in Tibet uh, and uh, Western China to the uh, to the Uyghur people, and so I'm not. I, I, I'm 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 very wary about Chinese motives in uh, in Africa. Well, I'm I'm not sure I I um, I understand your question. I'm I'm not an I expert in uh, in in mining, um, but um, and I. 
I, I don't know how to approach it because I'm not sure I, I understand the germ of, uh, of what you're saying. Well, there are any number of, uh, of people, um, uh, envoys, uh, though I'm, I'm merely uh, message carriers. Um, right now, our policy towards Haiti is, is, is so bad that um, we would do Haiti a service if the United States, after 200 years of, um, of meddling, would leave Haiti alone. Um, virtually all of our policies have been anti-democratic for Haiti. I have felt strongly uh, when uh, I was characterized as a friend of President Aristides. Um, I had always said that that was not the issue. While he is a friend, I've never been for Aristide politically uh, because that's not for me. I wasn't for Nelson Mandela in South Africa. I was for uh, affording the South African people and Haitian people the right to choose for themselves uh, who their political leaders would be. Uh, the, the, the administration now has, of course, uh, embraced uh, elections in Haiti that banned the largest political party, Lavalas, from participating. That is not democracy. We ought to be ashamed of ourselves. And uh, uh, President Obama um, uh, took uh, some pains to try to block uh, uh, President Aristide's return to his country uh, from South Africa. That's a violation of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, uh, of which the United States is a party. You cannot block um, uh, people from leaving their country, nor can you block them from returning to their own country. And so, uh, if not the letter, certainly the President violated the, uh, the spirit of uh, our legal binding obligation under that International Human Rights Treaty. He's in Haiti now. He's, he's home, he's back in his home, and he is, uh, he is operating the school he operated uh, before. So he's doing service work of uh, what he had always done. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know if he has what would be warranted. I just don't know. I, I, um, while we talk to them, we can't talk to them about things like that on the phone. And so we don't, uh, we don't touch uh, on that, but we are in, uh, in touch. Well, that's very true, particularly true in human rights. Uh, we, uh, we, we have these wonderful human rights uh, instruments uh, that uh, came on stream with the founding of the United Nations after 1945, spearheaded in many ways by Franklin Roosevelt and Eleanor Roosevelt, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and, and the great uh, conventions that, uh, that followed that, and um, much uh, with the agitation of uh, the developing world um, for the end of colonialism, uh, the end of discrimination, all of, uh, all of this. And so, because it, the United States won the war, uh, it largely uh, had a bigger stamp than anyone else on the language of the human rights covenants. Uh, and so, uh, much of what you see in the covenant on uh, civil and political rights, uh, you will see in American in the American Constitution. Um, a, a, a big similarity there. But it's important to realize at the same time, while all of these countries across the world have ratified these important conventions, the United States has not ratified many of them. We've not ratified the convention to protect the interests of children. We haven't ratified the con convention to uh, protect um, uh, women. Uh, and uh, just recently, uh, the Senate failed to ratify uh, the convention to, uh, uh, to uh, care for uh, those in the world um, with disabilities and, uh, and, and voted not to ratify the convention after listening to a plea from Bob Dole uh, making that plea from a wheelchair 
uh, before the uh, Senate. Uh, and so, so many of the important human rights uh, treaties uh, we have not ratified, but have been ratified by every, virtually every country in the world but the United States. Our feeling is that that is for you, it is not for us. We are exceptional. Uh, there's nothing above our Supreme Court. There's no law, there's no idea, there's no theory. We seldom consult other courts or listen to other voices. We only listen to our own. That is the truth in international law and particularly in international human rights law. May I answer your first question first before, uh, and, and you come back to me with your second question again. Let, let's talk about uh, reparations uh, first of all. We, we have uh, supportive, uh, supported uh, reparations for, for, uh, for Jews uh, who were used as forced labor uh, by Volkswagen during uh, World War II. The Clinton administration uh, supported that. Uh, we have supported uh, reparations um, for Japanese, um, and, um, and these are proper uh, and, and, and the right things to have been done. Reparations for Japanese who were interned uh, uh, during uh, World War II is a terrible thing to do. Um, uh, to intern people who were American citizens in that, uh, in that fashion. We have supported uh, something that one uh, could uh, call reparations uh, for, for Native Americans. Uh, but uh, when the question comes up uh, for, for reparations uh, for the descendants of slaves, um, America's huge um, uh, enterprise of, um, of, of, of wronging. Um, uh, as, as I have said, uh, the, the longest running um, uh, uh, human rights crime uh, in the world over the last uh, thousand years. Um, um, not, not only is it, uh, is, is it not uh, discussed uh, and, and and analyzed and thought about and responded to is just dismissed out of out of hand, uh, and that uh, is not um, it is not proper and it is not acceptable. But it is most important that the descendants of uh, those people uh, who were ground into the dust uh, under the um, under the the, the profit making wheels of slavery. It is most important that those people recognize, that we recognize, that no matter what America, official America does, we know what we are owed. We know what happened. And we know that there is a story of us, uh, the longer part of our history occurred before slavery, thousands of years. Um, um, when the Great Pyramid was built 5,000 years ago by Pharaoh Nama, it is now authenticated uh, that he was very black, uh, as were many of uh, the other pharaohs. It did, turns out the only one uh, we um, know much about as the head of Europe, Cleopatra, because she was descended from... Uh, from uh, Greek ancestry, and so we know about her, but uh, virtually everything in Egypt had been built by then and built by black Egyptians long before the arrival of, uh, of Arabs uh, in, uh, in, in North Africa. We should know this history. We should know all of this history, but we've been cut off from it. When I was a child, as I said, uh, I may have said before, um, Cottagey Woodson grew up not far from where I grew up. But his great book, The Miseducation of the Negro, was not allowed in Richmond public schools. He was a Harvard PhD, but his work was not acceptable because it was tell us something we needed to know about ourselves that we could not be allowed to know. Well, we have to. We have to break through this because in the last analysis, I think even more damaging uh, than um, the theft uh, of our higher, 
that has a material um, um, uh, uh, sort of quantification to it is, is uh, even more important to that is the, theft, is the theft of our story. That we don't know who we are. As Ralph Ellison said, when I discover who I am, I'll be free. I, I, I wish I could be more helpful to you on your, your second question, uh, but I, I don't have um, enough understanding of the particular facts of the several cases to, uh, to, to make a judgment. I, I would have to, uh, to know more um, to, uh, to, to form an opinion about uh, whether there was or appears to be mistreatment or not. I just don't uh, know enough, and I don't have any facts on these cases at all. I'll give you an example. The evening uh, that uh, President Aristide was abducted from his home at, uh, before 3 a.m. the next morning when the American Marines Special Forces rather arrived uh, to, to take him away into the plane and to be flown into the night. I called uh, the President. An American voice answered the phone. That was very strange. And um, I said, I'd like to speak to President Aristide. He's not here. Uh, is Madam Aristide? She's not here. And so then the line was cut. Tavis Malley was to go to uh, Haiti the next day to interview the President on Sunday, February 29th. My wife, um, uh, who, who was working for Haiti at the time, along with uh, former Congressman Ron Dellums, uh, was making the arrangements for Tavis's trip. Tavis uh, called to say the trip is off. That uh, Ron Dellums just called me to say that uh, he had just spoken to Secretary of State uh, Powell and that uh, Colin Powell had said that, uh, that uh, the, the thugs the rebels were coming to Port-au-Prince the next day on Sunday to kill the president. And the rebel head, uh, a fellow named Guy Philippe, had already said that he was going to do that. Uh, Sunday the 29th of February was his birthday, and he planned to kill the, birth the president on his birthday. That's what Powell told Ron Dellums, and he also told him that we'll do nothing to uh, protect the president or to defend him. The president's security agents, um, uh, the Steel Foundation uh, from the West Coast, had already checked to see if, uh, uh, if the U.S. would do anything to defend the embassy, uh, to help them control uh, the rebels. The U.S. said they would not. The president was all alone. The president's helicopter pilot had flown up uh, to uh, the north and spotted the rebels who had been trained by Americans in the Dominican Republic and armed by the Bush administration in the Dominican Republic. They were 100 kilometers from Port-au-Prince and heading away from Port-au-Prince, and the president knew this, and Colin Powell had to have known this when he was saying that they were coming to kill him the next day. Colin Powell had been saying publicly that we would not allow the overthrow of a democratic administration. Privately, he was trying to frighten Aristide into fleeing. When Aristide did not do that, or at least later that night, when I thought that his life was under threat, I called uh, Peter Jennings at ABC News, George Gatter at AP, Randall Pinkston at CBS, and said, that uh, my understanding is that Colin Powell has told Ron Dellums they are coming to kill the president on Sunday. And we've got to get news on this. They said, well, we have to talk to Ron Dellums. I gave them the number. They called uh, uh, Mr. Dellums. And then Peter Jennings called me back, said Ron Dellums will not confirm that he had any conversation with Peter Jennings. I mean, with. Uh, with uh, Secretary of State Powell. No story. But the president knew 
that the rebels were a long way from Port-au-Prince. And so he didn't frighten. He didn't go anywhere. They stayed in the city the entire week and into the night. Then the, uh, the special forces arrived, abducted him, took him and his wife against their will, stopping in Antigua not far from us. We were told at the airport that even the immigration papers uh, were uh, inconsistent. Uh, first saying there were 50 people on the plane, then striking through it saying there was zero on the plane, when in actual fact there were 50 people on the plane. The Special Forces people, the Aristides, and some other people. And so that's why we had to go to uh, uh, the Central African Republic to, uh, to rescue them, to bring them back to Jamaica, uh, where uh, P.J. Patterson, the Prime Minister, gave them refuge for seven days before they could go to South Africa. But the American role in this, the French role, Colin Powell's role was indefensible. You'd have to ask Ron Dellums. Um, we, as a matter of fact, uh, in the month following all of that, we called Ron Dellums three times, never returned the call, never spoke to him again for years and years, 20 years. Well, we, we have, um, uh, the United States has a military footprint in over 90 countries. Uh, w one of the reasons that uh, we uh, are so resistant to ratifying the International Criminal Court is that we don't want uh, to see a circumstance uh, under which uh, any American might ever be hauled before uh, the International Criminal Court uh, and uh, for, for, for anything at any time. Uh, and, and so uh, for countries that don't, don't have that kind of exposure, uh, that are not involved in um, uh, a number of wars uh, at the same time uh, uh, and are not involved with so many countries in, uh, in, in a military fashion, they don't have the same risk uh, that the uh, United States has. And so I, I, uh, I, I think it, uh, it, uh, it, it describes uh, what we're doing. We, we're interested and we're interested in after World War II and opening uh, the world uh, for um, American trade uh, and American products uh, and to, to, uh, to develop those markets uh, for, um, for Americans and American businesses to do what we need uh, doing. Uh, that uh, uh, takes on um, some of the um, um, earmarks of, uh, of empire. Um, and so I think it is a fair description to say um, and to call it um, an American empire. I don't think um, that um, uh, the comparisons to the Roman Empire um, are, are, are perhaps so apt because the times are so different. Uh, but um, uh, do we use the military to accomplish uh, some of these objectives? Probably. Um, uh, uh, are we um, interested uh, in, uh, in profits? Uh, yes, uh, we, uh, we tolerate human rights crimes in China, um, and at the same time, we try to crush uh, Cuba. Uh, Cuba uh, uh, doing the best it can to develop uh, its, uh, its health care system um, um, under the American embargo, uh, had uh, almost no catheters of any kind and other kinds of medical equipment. Uh, and there were certain surgeries in Cuba that were made impossible because of the American embargo, and children were dying in Cuba for that reason. Nonetheless, um, we continued to uh, throttle Cuba. But we would never consider doing such uh, to China because it would not be in our interest to do that in uh, in, uh, in, in China. Oh, your second question was? Well, I think that, I, I think that was unfortunate um, uh, th that uh, I, 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 I never believed or never wanted um, to send uh, the U.S. military in uh, to South Africa to right wrongs. I thought that would have been a mistake there, and I thought it was a mistake in Libya. 
I don't think that's the way to build democracy. And any and any time you create the downfall of uh, uh, either a tyrant or a democrat uh, through undemocratic and military means, you find uh, the restoration of order and tranquility a very difficult thing to accomplish. And so the the the, the problems follow you in in those cases. Uh, now we may start stop covering these things, but that doesn't mean. Uh, that uh, they're not very difficult and troubling consequences that follow uh, on the heels of these kinds of enterprises. I think that was a mistake to do what we did uh, in uh, in Libya and and the way he was executed uh, and uh, and the thought that uh, we might bear some responsibility for that uh, was uh, uh, more than unfortunate. Well, I, I, and Krumah wasn't perfect, um, although I, I thought he was uh, a, a marvelous uh, scholar. Um, uh, and I, I read uh, a great deal of his work uh, very closely and was impressed by it. Uh, he had a special connection to the United States, as you know. Uh, he was a graduate of Lincoln uh, University uh, in, uh, in, in, in Pennsylvania, um, and uh, Ghana was the first uh, country in 1957 to accomplish independence, uh, which gave uh, the black community in the United States a great deal of pride. And I, I felt uh, that pride, and I remember watching the cover, uh, the cover of it uh, on uh, American television. Uh, but um, uh, when too much power is concentrated anywhere, um, generally, um, we see evidence of uh, situations of those uh, who came to do good but stay to do, stayed to do well. I, I, I don't know, I, I know about the charges, but I don't know uh, the extent to um, whether they have been or were ever proven or not. Uh, and he was overthrown when he was out of the country, of course, uh, in China. Uh, and, uh, of course, that was the end of the story of Kwame Nkrumah when I think he had so much to say about Africa. But because he was saying things about a United States of Africa uh, and a sort of uh, prioritizing the interest of Africa um, above the interest of the uh, of those who want uh, who would want to make use of Africa, he probably collected uh, enemies. I have found uh, in in my um, experience uh, that those people who vigorously try to do um, anything for their own populations to lift people uh, in their own way, they collect enemies uh, in the powerful West uh, very quickly, and uh, that uh, I think was the case with. Uh, uh, of, of Haiti. Uh, Senator Chris Dart said uh, when all of this uh, was going on that President Aristide had uh, gotten himself crossways um, uh, of um, a moneyed interest in Haiti. That the people who wanted the money, um, who had enormous sums of money, the Canadian ambassador there said he'd never seen such wealth, all concentrated in Haiti in white hands, a Haiti that looks very much like the old South Africa looks. That's the part that we don't see from the outside, that Haiti is very much a race and class-based society. But here was a president who wanted to raise the black peasantry um, um, because that were the, were the ranks from which he sprang. Uh, to uh, to lighten their load, to ease their misery by raising uh, their uh, pay from a dollar to two dollars a day, for that alone had created an unforgivable offense to the wealthy, and the U.S. Um, was bound up indissolubly with that uh, with that uh, with that group, and so there was race and class. Uh, that was attractive to the U.S. and to American money as well, who wanted to invest in Haiti and in the sweatshops that didn't want uh, any minimum uh, wage raised above what it had been uh, all the while. Of, uh, of a grandmother who has had uh, previous lives, uh, that she relates to her, uh, her grandson who wants to be a writer, and she wants him to feel 
a great pride uh, 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 of possibility, uh, and she wants him to know that uh, the, the times uh, in which he is living take up a very small space in our long existence, uh, and that we have known better times that we will see, we will see again. And she, she tells him of those times. Uh, when um, we were in command of an Egypt uh, that uh, was the greatest uh, nation in the world. I have no clue, none, none, none at all. I, um, I think these things, are, it must be generational. Oh, I, th I, think, um, I think popular media is, uh, is, is a major force. And um, I, I think uh, uh, young people uh, understand uh, the potential and the might of that force, and we, we have to use it. When I was talking a while ago, I was talking about uh, big corporate broadcast media that uh, decides every night uh, what to tell people about themselves. Um, uh, but more importantly, decides what not to tell people um, about what's going on in, in the world. That's a lot of power concentrated uh, in, uh, in, a, in a very few hands, and it is managed largely by um, uh, small groups of whites uh, in, uh, in corporate rooms around the country. There are fewer and fewer blacks, even in publishing. Um, uh, editors have, uh, have disappeared. Uh, from the ranks of uh, editors in, in the great publishing houses. It is more difficult to get uh, serious books uh, published by black authors than it, uh, than it had been. Uh, and so the, the, these are very difficult times uh, for, for black people who want to say something, things that need to be said very much. And we, we, uh, that we as a nation ought to all have a curiosity about. I, I, I think... Um, we need to tell not fewer stories, but more stories. I, I want to know the Native American story. I want to know about um, the, their wonderful music. I, wa I want to know about their, their culture, their traditions, their, their oneness with the earth and with the environment. I want to know about uh, 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 Latino American story. I want to know the story of, uh, of the Southwest of America. The story of Texas when it was Mexico. Um, I want to know all of that. Um, I want to know the Asian American story. Now that's what American history has to be. We have to know each other's stories. And we should know the stories of people who live throughout the world. And then some of the fences between us would fall. Uh, we'd be less inclined to say that our concerns stop at our borders. That we should all be concerned about humankind, uh, no matter where one lives. Uh, we, we are concerned about their lot, and we, 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 we cultivate that concern when we know their stories. But we, 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 we don't do that. Well, uh, let me say this about C-SPAN, first of all. And I'd said to, to, to Brian Lamb many years ago, uh, th this, this story is, is, is this, this, this operation, this C-SPAN, is, is one of the great contributions to democracy because you have, without prejudice, all voices um, uh, expressing themselves. And it's important um, that we all have an opportunity to hear all of those Voices, so I I I, um, I, th I think that uh, the the Heritage Foundation voice is uh, is uh, is a voice to be heard, and I, I wouldn't even argue against um, a slice of life um, television offerings um, that one sees as long as they they're proportionate. Um, um, if you're telling a story of uh, of a population of the American population, um, then tell the story of poverty from Appalachia to other kinds of poverty. Tell it all. Uh, if, if we're talking about uh, the less pleasant uh, expressions uh, from, um, uh, from the, Mer the American cultural range, let's, let's cover the whole range from top to bottom, uh, from east to west, from north to south. 
let's cover everything, let's see the whole picture. But um, that is not what is happening uh, the way I see it, particularly in the black community, that's not what is happening. So um, I, I'm just saying that, uh, that we have to have better representation in the room in which decisions are made about what to cover and how to do it, and how to apportion time and resources to uh, each piece of that. Uh, we're, we're not going in the right direction there. We're going away from uh, that direction as far as I can see in publishing, uh, in the print industry, in television, in the whole thing. Uh, about um, uh, um, some facility to, to get people to know what they need to know, not just in America, but in the entire world. We need to know more about the world, and uh, so often we find that uh, the world knows more about the we than we do about them. I, I, when I got to Tanzania in 1970, I recall talking to a kid who was about 14 years old. His name was Godfrey Ngogoma. And he approached me in the street and started talking to me about Thomas Jefferson and Jeffersonian democracy. And I was stunned because th there were teachers I knew and Americans generally who couldn't find Tanzania on a map. They know more about you than you know about them. That's sad. Uh, Exceptionalism has cost us a knowledge of much of the world. It's, it's almost one can liken to your years in high school when you knew the kids who finished ahead of you, but you can't you can't remember anybody who was in the class behind you. Um, we happen to think that uh, uh, people, because they're poor, are less important. It's a sad state to be in. Let's objectify this for a second. Let me use uh, UN human rights language. Let's say the criteria were uh, not just race, but race, color, religion, gender, nationality, political opinion. You take any one of those and say, we're going to select out people from this category by gender or by religion uh, or, or by um, uh, nationality or by political opinion. And we're going to take all of those people that we can find and we're going to enslave them for 246 years and follow that with a legally enforced period of peonage in which you work for nothing, which is slavery by another name, and then follow that by legal segregation, and then take away their names, and then rename their group so that they are no longer Africans, but they become some strange, odd um, um, label uh, Negroes whatever that is or wherever that came from, they'll be known by that. And so they lose all their tradition, all of their mores, all of their, 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 their yeses and noes about what to do and what not to do and how we do things uh, from uh, the dawn of time. And they don't know themselves anymore. It doesn't make it difference whether they're black or not. Take the caller. Take his profile. Do that to him. And see where his descendants fall after two and a half centuries. It has nothing to do with any particular race. It would happen to anyone treated in that way. Now, this is not personal. I'm not saying that anyone has a responsibility, any individual has any responsibility for what happened, began to happen a long time ago. 
I'm saying our government is corporate. It's an institution. It benefited. And it has a responsibility. And so if reparations were paid, I'm a taxpayer. I would be paying them. I'm not suggesting that I would get reparations. I don't need repair. I'm saying those who've been crushed to earth would get some recognition of what happened and some opportunity to repair themselves. Why else do you think we see this disproportionate success failure gap, wealth assets gap? We know that people are equally naturally endowed. That can't be the problem. How else could it have happened? Oh, three and a half centuries of slavery and near slavery. That's right. When I was a little boy, I remember at the age of five, people started to talk about race. I thought it was absurd. I couldn't distinguish one from the other. People are people. But the wounds add up. As I say, they, they register beneath the surface. And while things are forgotten in the conscious mind, in the conscious mind, they're remembered in other places. And so this uh, question about what I wrote then has to do with an involuntary reflex that one is a member of a group that did horrible things to me and to my mother and to my father and to everyone I knew. Does that mean that's a permanent status? No. But that's a reflex and would be for anyone subjected to the kinds of things that we were and many still are being subjected to. Uh, when I said that uh, uh, perhaps we should just leave it alone, I meant um, alternative to what we have done for 200 years. Um, even Frederick Douglass couldn't puzzle out why uh, we had been uh, so hostile. The speech he gave in Chicago to the World's Fair in the 1890s uh, was a speech that would be appropriate now. As a matter of fact, when he was talking about the Haitian president, it sounded as if he knew President Aristide and knew uh, what had befallen him. Um, but that is standard fare from the U.S. over the last uh, 200 years, and why? Um, uh, what distinguishes Haiti from the rest of the Caribbean? Um, they are uh, in the rest of the Caribbean, democratic, um, uh, stable governments um, from end to end uh, with uh, friendships with the, uh, the United States, um, um, open government where all of the freedoms are, um, are, are enjoyed, uh, speech, religion, and uh, all, all the rest. Um, Haiti is an extraordinary place. It is um, um, eight million people. Uh, its, um, its arts are um, world-class, uh, some of the best painters in the world, its poetry, its, its literature. Um, uh, Haiti has everything going for it. But why has the U.S. singled out Haiti uh, for this kind of opprobrium? Um, I, I'm, I'm not quite sure that any of us has figured, figured this out. Perhaps it is um, uh, on um, uh, a strategic um, a water passage uh, that um, um, in, it causes it to, to invite uh, such intense interest uh, from the United States. 
perhaps uh, because um, Haiti has gold and diamonds um, and perhaps oil and all of that um, um, offshore, uh, perhaps that has something to do with it. Or perhaps it has to do with the anger that uh, Jefferson and George Washington and so many felt, uh, with the exception of uh, one of the early Americans, Thomas Paine, who spoke out against what the U.S. was doing to Haiti. Um, uh, because Haiti had the temerity uh, to strike out uh, on its own uh, and to stand up and to remain African. Haiti is the most African uh, country in the Caribbean. Uh, it's uh, its, it's uh, idea of its religion is that when you die, you will return to Guinea uh, because they still remember uh, Africa. Its art uh, is um, uh, inspired by, uh, by Africa. Haiti is a country of a thousand proverbs uh, when African proverbs have been forgotten uh, throughout the diaspora. Uh, and Haiti is a country that knows its history, that invites uh, the almost anger of Western society, and particularly in France. Uh, they remember um, uh, um, Jean-Jacques uh, Dessalines, and they remember um, um, Toussaint Louverture. Um, I, 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 sadly, I, I went to a school in Jamaica to speak to high school students in Jamaica, not far from Haiti, and I asked a group of 15-year-olds if they knew who Toussaint Louverture was, and they said not a hand went up, and I asked if they knew who Snoop Dogg was, and every hand went up. They knew nothing of the extraordinary story of the Haitian people to whom we owe so much, but it still seems to gall the United States and the Western community. And so, for that reason, I am suspicious of um, our embrace of uh, Haiti. Um, and it, uh, it, uh, it, it bothers me, uh, and it is extreme to say what I said, but sometimes one has to wonder if they would be better off if America left them alone. His next question was... I, I, um, I, I, I just think that uh, when you get um, uh, American military involved uh, with uh, your military, the, um, the disengagement uh, does not come without consequences. I am, uh, I, I, typically these things lead to bad ends uh, and uh, for the countries uh, in, uh, involved. Uh, when your country uh, becomes of strategic usefulness, uh, to the uh, to the United States, um, you you find that the management of your own democracy will be infinitely uh, more, more difficult to administer. Oh, I'm uh, as I've gotten older, I've uh, become uh, more more disinclined to uh, to judge people. Um, I am uh, um, the, the judging I do is um, I try to make it of myself usually. I think most of us, um, uh, when we are doing things that uh, others would uh, feel uh, not the right things to do, we do uh, out of an absence of knowledge of consequences of what we're doing. I think uh, most Americans, irrespective of race, um, know uh, very little about um, uh, what goes on uh, in countries around the world in response um, uh, to uh, American policies, uh, American opposition, American aid, American involvement, um, and um, often um, these things, um, uh, it is not a constructive relationship or not in the country's interest. Um, but you don't know uh, because um, you, you don't, you, you, you're just ill-informed. And there's very little in uh, America that would afford you opportunities to be well-informed. Uh, uh, 
We demonize the uh, the UN u- usually, uh, even Winston Churchill, uh, at the UN's beginnings, um, said that it is better to jaw jaw than war war. Uh, and so the UN is a wonderful opportunity for the entire world to gather uh, to disagree, sometimes raucously, uh, in uh, what is not a neat process, but a necessary process to resolve disputes. We ought to embrace it. Um, We ought to embrace our differences. We ought to embrace these human rights um, uh, conventions, Uh, but we don't do that. Uh, We almost celebrate our ignorance, and I'm talking about all of us. Um, of all classes, whites and blacks, from the top of government to the bottom of society. Uh, we, we do that, and because we are the most powerful country in the world, we do the world no service when we do that. Leadership um, should be principled, and we, we should recognize that uh, perhaps our opportunity is fleeting to save us from ourselves. Um, We we don't know um, uh, the point at which we will have done so much damage uh, to home earth uh, that it will become unlivable. Uh, When we've overheated um, environment, uh, the environments uh, so so irreversibly that no one can live here. But uh, we can't support the Kyoto Accord which may be in itself too little too late. We can't because we're exceptional. And we listen to no one on anything. It is the worst kind of devastating stupidity that one would, uh, would, would want to see in, in, in a country we like to describe as the greatest country in the world. It is so saddening. And in a democracy, we all have a responsibility, for we are all Democrats, and we all have to make it account to us for what it does, which means that we all have to be enlightened. We all have to know something about what it's doing and then participate. And I don't think we do that very well either. We seem to be diverted by the most frivolous stupidities. Um, and television has done us no service either. Well, I, I, I should say that uh, President Zuma has to be, uh, has to be applauded uh, because he did everything uh, to um, respond to President Aristide's wishes to go home. Um, he and uh, his wife, Mildred, and their two girls had, had been in South Africa for, uh, for a long time. The South African government was, had been a, a wonderful host, but they wanted to go home. Uh, and uh, I, I can't read uh, President Ar- uh, Obama's mind. Uh, I don't know why he expended um, uh, energy and resources uh, trying to, uh, to block um, uh, President Aristide's uh, homecoming. As I've said, it was a violation of uh, human rights law and um, and sadly so, I I, I disagreed uh, uh, very vigorously with the president on his role in that. That's very true. Yes, I I wrote that, and I I, I felt I felt that way, and I thought everyone did. That um, before um, uh, that uh, first impression is overturned by uh, access and knowledge. Uh, that uh, their the faces that seem to deliver um, uh, certain messages, uh, their the faces uh, that have um, um, aquiline, uh, sort of straight, um, uh, geometric uh, kind of slashing um, uh, uh, exactness to them that, uh, that give you the impression of uh, precision uh, and, um, and rectitude and scientific percep- perfection and all of that. And then they are round faces uh, with, uh, with, with soft features that are warm and fuzzy that seem to suggest uh, uh, something else, um, all of which is totally illogical and makes no sense once you get to know the person behind the faces, uh, but this was a child's um, 
a child's game uh, to see how often I could come uh, you know, close to the to the truth in my reckonings, uh, and I don't know how well I did. Uh, do you think there's any chance of a science behind any of this? Well, many countries have. Um, one of the great comforts about living where I live is that um, I don't feel the burden of that. Um, that uh, that social mobility is uh, is uh, is quite accessible uh, on uh, uh, St. Kitts, um, and it is um, it is a wonderful space and uh, and a wonderful democracy and it shows uh, uh, what great qualities can come uh, to small places. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know how to answer that uh, question about America. I, 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 I do think that it's that power, as Frederick Douglass says, Power concedes nothing without a demand. Never has, uh, never has, and never will. It is probably true that advantage uh, once gained always expresses itself uh, in an effort to maintain itself. Uh, and uh, people um, uh, then um, uh, learn not to know each other, so as to be able to d dismiss uh, uh, people's sufferings that um, they have relegated to, uh, to another place unseen to them. Um, and so perhaps that's what happens. I, I can't begin to guess what it's like on the other side. I, I, I used to wonder when I was a child wh why these people were being so cruel to us. And um, wh what must they be like? I remember when I took some groceries, when I was a 15-year-old grocery boy, I took some groceries to a home somewhere in a distant white community. Uh, the grocer had driven me in his car, and I had to take him into the house. And the family was in the kitchen, and I noticed they had an, an oven on the wall in a, in, in a brick wall, and I'd never seen a wall oven uh, before. Um, my family was, uh, you know, my, my, my father was a teacher, but um, we had four children, so we didn't have uh, a wall of it, at least. But I noticed the family began to talk about intimate things right in front of me. And I was insulted by it. because they spoke of these things as if I weren't there. I was invisible. What does that tell you about people? We still show movies in America, on Turner Classic movies. Movies in which black characters, movies from the 1930s, that register fresh with me still. Black characters, males are always scared out of their skins. The eyes bubbled wide, whites enveloping, scared of everything that the white female characters aren't afraid of. And the black women characters are always compulsorily huge and overweight, while the white characters, female characters, are always petite and pretty. And all of the grinning and bowing and scraping is just as offensive to me now as it was when I was a little boy, but they still show it. That should not be on TV. 
It was humiliating then. It's humiliating now. But it makes money. The AIDS program. I suppose I would concede him um, that. Um, and I don't know what else to say about uh, President Bush. Um, I, I, I don't. I don't think he was concerned um, substantively about a, a great deal of things, and certainly not about uh, black issues. Um, uh, and so I, I'm at a loss for words to comment beyond that about, uh, about, about Bush. Well, the, the unemployment uh, among blacks is now 16-plus uh, percent. Um, and so um, um, whites are doing marginally better. Blacks are doing significantly worse. I, uh, the, the question is, how much um, of that do we ascribe to the, uh, to the president? Of course, there are other uh, market forces and factors, I suppose, but uh, I think that's a good question to put to the president. I should say at the same time that uh, nobody wants more than I do uh, to see uh, 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 President Obama succeed. It, succeed, it, it is very important to the black community that he have a successful president, uh, a presidency. And I think, uh, to some extent, uh, that's why blacks have not been disposed uh, to, uh, to be harshly critical uh, of him uh, because of uh, things we might uh, think he should have done but um, has not done. I think the political space he um, operates in uh, is, um, is very small on these kinds of issues. Um, and um, and I, I don't know if he is willing to push out that space to do more things, but I think it is a question he would have to answer. But objectively, I, I don't think there's any question that um, if one uses um, employment as a measure, that, um, that blacks have done worse than virtually every other community um, uh, since the beginning of his presidency. Well, if you, you know where um, San Juan, Puerto Rico is? About 300 miles due east. Oh my! Uh, they 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 all come there. I'm I'm I, I'm really at a loss to recommend the cruise line. I don't know much about that, but uh, you know, the, all of the cruise uh, lines come to St. Kitts. You pick one, it it will be there. I don't think so. Uh, Moses Narl, I, I I I knew well. He. He is a good friend of my sister Jewel, uh, so yes, uh, I, I knew him. But the others, I'm not so sure. And now remember, I left high school um, over 50 years ago. The, a, a picture taken together was taken by Ebony Magazine uh, a long time ago. Um, they um, in in the studio in Chicago. They did several pictures of us. I don't have a copy of one of them, but he wanted to uh, to do uh, more than that. Uh, he wanted to uh, cover conventions. He wanted to comment. He wanted to interpret uh, the uh, the news. Um, and he was being asked uh, to to accept the role of of reading copy. Uh, he wasn't happy with that. No. Let's see. Um, um, the year it's been uh, about twenty years now. He died when he was forty nine. Of age, yes. Well, you, you know, it's uh, it's it, it's it's terrifyingly prevalent in in uh, in poor communities globally, uh, and it, um, it 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 it's it's now um, uh, a, a real terrifying force in uh, in uh, in women's. Uh, 
situations too of women's health, uh, and it's a big factor in uh, in prison life. Uh, and uh, uh, certain states uh, not uh, allowing the last time I looked uh, condom use um, uh, for prisoners in prison uh, because they don't w want to come to terms with the um, the. Uh, incidents of uh, sex in prison and men bringing AIDS um, home to their uh, to their wives um, that sort of thing um, um, and these are are uh, big issues that uh, trouble us and um, AIDS is less talked about uh, now than it used to be but um, there's still no cure uh, one can take of course a cocktail of uh, medicines and uh, control it if um, if uh, if you don't have a full-blown uh, disease. So, but it is a big problem in poor communities and a big problem in poor countries uh, and uh, in Africa as well, of course. Uh, that's that's been that's been devastating. I mean, you, uh, particularly when you look at this a family uh, at a time and and what it means to a family's financing. Uh, when one puts uh, virtually everything that one has into a home thinking that's the safest place one can put it, and then to lose everything uh, like, uh, like, like that. Um, uh, uh, so I, I, I can't agree with you more uh, that uh, w w we ought to be reassured that, um, that something uh, will happen in response that there ought to be some recourse um, uh, to, to make these people whole, uh, but um, it doesn't seem to be on the horizon, and I'm every bit as concerned about it as you are. Well, I, I, um, I don't know what to say. I don't think I can uh, satisfactorily answer that question uh, for that person. Um, and I don't try to answer that question, frankly. Um, I think those who, um, who have endured and those who have been wounded and those who are in trouble uh, know what I'm saying, and they understand it. Um, so I... I won't even try to answer that question. Well, I don't know what to tell Diane in, in, uh, in, in Brooklyn. Um, she doesn't um, seem to have an open mind. Um, I would guess I'd ask her to read the debt. Um, and perhaps after she's read it, um, she might be uh, thoughtful about these things, or at least she can understand how we, uh, uh, of course, convey from one generation to the next um, the disabilities uh, sustained. Um, everything we do, we come by from our parents uh, for good or ill. And, uh, when our parents are crippled, um, so is the child. Hurt people hurt people. When you have space to love, when you're whole enough, you always begin by loving yourself. To love yourself, you have to know your story. When I was a little boy and hadn't heard of Timbuktu and then discovered its significance and the significance of Africa and its antiquity, that all of Greece's gods came from Egypt and all of Egypt's um, came from Ethiopia before the dawn of time that Greece is science, it's math, it's literature, it's 
so much borrow from ancient Egypt. When I was a child, I needed to know these things. Just as whites need to know about ancient Rome, or ancient Greece, or ancient anything that people who look like them accomplished in antiquity. Well, if they need that, so do I. I don't need to know what their people did. I need to know the story of my people. Well, I should, when you mentioned Danny Schechter, I haven't seen Danny in, uh, in some of years now. When, when I was in uh, law school at Harvard and we had taken over the president's office at Harvard for, for a week, the president was a good friend, uh, Derek Bach, who vacated his offices, and uh, and uh, 30 of us uh, stayed in uh, the uh, administration building for a week protesting Harvard's holding of Gulf oil shares in its portfolio because of what Gulf was doing to assist Portugal in its war making against uh, Angola and Mozambique and Guinea-Bissau's effort to win independence from Portugal. And uh, Danny was, uh, was, was, was a real um, uh, uh, a stump speaker on these issues at the time. I think uh, uh, a disinvestment is always a good tool to use in trying to win uh, social goals. I, I don't think uh, uh, the South Africans uh, were able to understand anything that we were saying as, as long as we were saying something was unjust or wrong, but when uh, they saw it affecting their bottom line uh, and we were able to uh, get past uh, punishing sanctions, uh, then we knew um, uh, the beginning of the end was at, uh, at, at hand. And so I, I always think uh, that uh, uh, economic strategies are, are good to uh, to employ. Um, at the time, we were being told uh, all the time that uh, what we were suggesting wouldn't work. Um, uh, Chester Crocker, then the Assistant Secretary of State for Africa, was saying that uh, constructive engagement uh, was uh, the best way to go forward, to simply talk to the South Africans about uh, being nicer. And we said, well, well, that hasn't worked. Um, and you've tried it for a very long time, let's try something new. And the moment the sanctions were passed, and the moment the bottom line was affected, um, uh, South Africa uh, began to become uh, a new nation and a new society. I think that uh, can happen on so many matters you're trying to, uh, to change. I, I, I got the other day, um, George, uh, George uh, what's his name, Tennant, I opened the paper that morning and found out uh, that uh, I had come all the way up from the Caribbean to accept it. I was deeply honored. Um, a, a, a black uh, a member of the Georgetown administration had worked so hard uh, to, uh, to make this possible. Uh, and I was uh, profoundly honored. And I, g I got up that night and opened the paper. Uh, to see that George Tennant uh, was to be honored. Uh, he was, of course, instrumental in making this um, illegal and immoral war uh, in Iraq. Um, uh, the, the site of the Blitzkrieg, uh, Blitzkrieg of bombing of uh, Iraq and thinking about innocent civilians beneath all of those bombs uh, that lit up the night uh, that the war of the U.S. against Iraq was opened. And justification of a spate of lies before the United Nations to make uh, this possible with the fig leaf of Security Council cover. Uh, was uh, was outrage, outrageous uh, and uh, uh, despicable on my part. And he was at the very center of it. And I just thought, 
that the value of the honorary degree from uh, Georgetown had been lost for me. And so I, I, um, I came up the next morning to meet with the Georgetown uh, people to tell them that I couldn't accept it. Uh, and I uh, caught a plane and went home. Uh, the, uh, the, we met all of the uh, International Monetary Fund uh, requirements. Um, uh, the uh, governing La Labor Party has reduced um, the debt uh, of the country almost by half uh, over the last uh, few years. Um, our democracy is, um, is an energetic one uh, <clears throat> that uh, you know, people say uh, 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 many things uh, in the public square. Uh, as the parties um, uh, fence uh, with each other, but it is healthy and it is open and it is free. And um, I have really enjoyed the great privilege of living, uh, living there, given to me by my dear loving wife, Hazel, uh, to, uh, to be uh, 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 a participant in the process of her wonderful country. Oh, my. I, I, uh, I, I, I think it's impolitic to answer that question uh, because I, uh, I'm not in politics. I don't have anything to lose, and I, I've always felt that um, somehow I ought to be hell-bent to say exactly what I think, uh, but I, I will not say things. Um, uh, when people have accorded me an opportunity to meet with them, um, uh, and I will not say things that will be offensive to those people uh, later on. Uh, I've had my feelings hurt before, and I, I know what it feels like, and I, I don't think that's useful to do. Thank you for having me.